Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. It is so, so much something I look forward to. I want you to know that as you are listening to this podcast. I look forward to connecting with you every week in this way. To me, words as vibration, as frequency are such medicine. And as well, I think it has been such a powerful part of my journey to express through words by utilizing our mind and our thoughts, because our mind so often has been tagged as the bad guy or the thing that derails us when we're on this incredible spiritual journey to ourselves for our health and our wellness. And the truth is, the mind is such an integral part of our life experience and our expression. And because of the mind, we can do that. And so honoring the words is something I really, truly embody. That said, I know many of you are writers, and if you're not a professional author or writer, you're, you are a writer in some way, shape, or form. You might write for work for your job, those reports, or you might be writing those emails. You might be writing those posts on social media for your friends, family, or the soccer team. You write. You communicate through word and through journaling. Oh, and that is what is inspiring the Sunday morning coffee today. You know how I love journals. If you've followed my work over the past several years, you know that I tout journaling as not a way of getting clarity as a first step, but as a way of clearing the mind, giving the mind a voice, giving the mind the room and the space to express itself. Yes, that's correct. The mind. Because it needs a platform and deserves to be free. And when the thoughts give an, get an opportunity to flow so freely onto the paper like water down the stream, you will feel better. You will loosen up the restraints or constrictions you have felt in your body and your energy, with your spirit, with your heart and the judgment and the, the evaluative evaluation part of you, that, that critical analytical part of you gets to flow, 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 and it gets freedom. It becomes unbounded. And that is beautiful. And that is a gift. So journaling does that first. That is the first step. This is why journaling can heal. Sometimes it helps to have a prompt or an inspiration I find that most often through reading a gorgeous passage out of a book, a poet, a poem, or a pulling a card that's inspirational, that gives words or messages, just a passage to read. Maybe for you, it is out of a, um, a sacred scripture book, or it could simply be something you see when you wake up in the morning, something you feel, the sunshine that gives you that invitation in to open the mind and write. I know for some, there's a very intimate part of writing that, that there's this like privacy and confidentiality about it. It's so intimate, so vulnerable. And if that is you, if you're in a place where you're afraid somebody's going to read your journal, which is legitimate in the college dorm room or your someone who's, who's, who you're afraid that your parents are going to read it or your sister or your, your spouse, for example. You can keep it in a special place. Keep it at your workplace. Keep it at your job. Journal on your lunch break. Journal in the car. Keep it in your glove box. Or you can journal and write and then tear out those pages and throw them away, compost them. Because the idea is just to flow the thought, the word, the energy together, flow for freedom of thought, freedom, freedom, freedom from restricted, constraint, thought, thinking, mind, only that to release some of those anxious, fearful energetics around words, around what is really kind of guiding you silently in the background, 
It's like a backstabbing person. <laughs> it's like the one that stirs the pot. That's what your brain, your thoughts are doing. And you want to use, utilize your brain and your thoughts and your mind productively in a healthy way, in a supportive way. So you need to honor it. Give it some room and some freedom. And then you can tear up those sheets of paper and compost them. Throw them in the recycle bin when you get to work. Dump them off in the drive through at the coffee shop. Whatever you need to do. Just do it. You don't have to hold on. That's the piece I want you to know. Don't hold on. You can't hold on to water that's flowing through the creek. You can't hold on to water that's rushing through the river. You can't hold on to the water. You can't. Thoughts like water are fluid. Words are fluid. They give us a fluidity that allows us to adapt and to adjust and to move into the next place that is beautiful and abundant for us. It gives us freedom. Thought is like water. It should be giving you freedom, not holding you back. It is not bars. It is water. And water is also connected to emotion. So today, the Sunday morning coffee is inspired by my new journal, my beautiful new journal. And I have posted it on my Bridget Inspired Instagram page. It is beautiful. And I have admired this journal for quite some time, and I did not purchase it. I was very much cautious about this particular journal. I've seen it many times. It is from my favorite company, that Peter Popper Press. No, I'm not an affiliate. No, I'm not. a. Um, they're not a sponsor. Hey, anyone from Peter Popper Press, go ahead and contact me. I would love to get a lifetime's worth of free journals from you because I love them. They're beautiful. They're so artful. This particular journal is gold. And then it has like this patchwork quilting that is a blanket that wraps around two souls' bodies that are intertwined underneath. You can only imagine the connection. It's as though you can see the two heads, one above the other, kissing the other. It's called the kiss. And the dark hair of the one and the knotted back hair of the other and the just this sweetness and intimate imagery And yet there's this mysterious nature of how they're interwoven. It could literally be one body with two minds. And that spirit energy of of that connection, of that kiss, it reminds me of um, some art that I have in my house. And it it is a quote by Aristotle. And I also posted that on Bridget Inspired. And it says... Love is a single soul dwelling in two bodies. Love is a single soul dwelling in two bodies. And I know, I know, we could get into the talk about twin flames and soulmates and what all that means. Let's not make this a function of labeling so that we can understand. Let's be present and allow for the non-existent frame, structure. Let's allow the energy of the kiss to be a vulnerable recognition for me anyway, of a sacred intimacy of unknown, of unknown. For some, that kiss is a gateway, an invitation to see if there is a compatibility, a connection, a spark, as some might say. And yet, the reason why you get to the point of a kiss is because there has been a connection, a spark, a something there wanting to be discovered more deeply. And in order to feel more deeply, the kiss happens. So for me, it is extraordinarily vulnerable to even share that I wanted this journal for a while and I just couldn't bring myself to purchase it. It felt like a a part of me on display. If I purchase this journal and bring it into my home and carry it around with me, although the art itself is just gorgeous, it and you might have to look closely to kind of see what it really is and you might not know when it's interpreted and all that. Of course, interpretive art, beautiful, which I love. Beautiful, beautiful. I... I recognize that, but but for me, it was very, very meaningful and poignant. So I had to 
allow myself to come to this place in my journey, in my walk, where I could allow myself the gift of that. And recognizing that, yes, that is a sacred portal for me. And maybe it's because I use words. Maybe it's because I speak for a living. Maybe it's because it has been an unfolding experience of discovery for me to recognize what really is intimacy, what really it is that that kiss, even the term of it and the representation of this love, what it means to me. I've written about unconditional love. I've shared posts about it. I've expressed this renewed beautiful connection to myself, this fierce love within me. And in order to get to that place, I must be in my vulnerable state of full authenticity. And authenticity is vulnerable. Authenticity is, is really open. It's very naked. Naked authenticity. Maybe that's what we should do for a Sunday morning coffee. That seems more like an evening happy hour. However... <laughs> to each their own, right? But this kiss is a key. And because it's connected to the lips at first, it is a request for permission to access what is deeper within. A kiss is a request to access what is deeper inside. Now, you might interpret this very, very literally as in another human coming to you and kissing you or you being drawn into another human to touch their lips, to kiss, to go into that inquiry. Because it really is a question, isn't it? It's this curiosity of what is this? And you know, because the kiss always tells the truth. It always tells the truth. And it's awkward and bumbling potentially at first, unless it's very gentle and soft and very cautious. It can be questioning, inquisitive. It can be so much of a waterfall of information. Here comes the water element again. So does the kiss occur from the mind the drive and desire and the attraction and magnetism of the mind? Or does it come from someplace else? Is it truly the craving of the body to want to unite with another body? To then acknowledge and go down that trail inside the body throughout the chakras to connect at the soul level. Is that truly what the kiss is? Maybe that is why, for me, that intimacy of the, the concept of this kiss is the key to the soul. It always tells the truth. It cannot lie. It cannot lie. You know how someone feels. You sense their nervousness, their uncertainty, the extra moist wetness (laughs) of their mouth, the mouth where the words speak volumes. So it would make sense that a kiss allows the body to express the volumes of information, the sensory connection, the connectivity. How do you feel in your body? The goosebumps, the heat, the coolness, the nothingness, the absence of, the feeling of being carried out or inward into a universe that you can get lost in, that feeling of freedom and expansion, The kiss reveals the truth. Just the very thought of a kiss. Now, sit for a moment with me and think about a kiss. Think about a first kiss, okay? Think about a first kiss. That introduction, that invitation. Maybe there's a build-up to that. Maybe there's dating. Maybe there's hand-holding. Maybe there's other physical body touch that builds up to the kiss, Think about the first kiss. And you may have had so many firsts. (laughs) Depends on how seasoned you are in life that it might be hard to isolate or identify one which is good, 
then don't. Because the mixture and the blending of the understanding of the desire, the innate desire for connection to other souls that live in bodies is the point. A soul within a body and the body holding the soul sacred. When the body is holding the soul sacred, the kiss reveals the truth. It might be a temporary moment, a passing moment of intimacy, a minute second of connection, and then it's gone. And there's really nothing else that comes of that kiss. Aside from a recognition in the moment of a fit or not. And yet our own personal emotions in the heart space of loneliness or longing might be satisfied or satiated by any random kiss. As long as those lips and that portal of entry is soft and warm and gentle and genuine to receive or passionate and pounding like the rhythm of your heart the, with the desire for the animal-like primal connection to another. And that passion is powerful and it transcends. It transcends. The kiss is not about relationship as in a foundation or setting like the mind would create for you. It is about the truest, rawest, purest form of truth that is revealed in the moment of the kiss. And while a kiss may go through evolutions of change, which of course it does, because so too does the soul. So too does the heart show up in different ways on different days with emotional energy as information. And the kiss may be not something that is received either by you or by the other as the infinity sign, the lemmas gate of connection. And that is the ultimate goal, is the two halves reconnecting at the centered point of the kiss and then flowing together into the abyss of loving, knowing, intuitive, spiraling of cosmos and stargate energy. Just feeling that, my heart just opens like a fire at the hearth just kindles and poof opens. It's beautiful the levels and degrees that that represents within us. Mind, body, heart, and soul. Rather, body, soul, heart, and mind. Body, soul, heart, and mind. See that process, the layers of those four grids that occur with that intimacy, even the thought of it. The acceptance or rejection of the kiss, the quickly moving on to the next thing or the wanting more. To go deeper, to go in, to know the soul. Or rather, not your investigation to know that soul that you are kissing in the body, but to know yours to know your own soul. And truly, this is a selfish mission, the kiss. It is to know yourself. So maybe it doesn't matter who you kiss. Maybe the kissing booth scenario on happy days is a thing. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it has nothing to do with the dramatization of love and people meeting and falling in love and getting married, and that is the end of the story, happily ever after. Maybe it really has nothing to do with that. Maybe that was a part of the dramatization and the over-marketing of love by our society and what it means and what it doesn't and the stages and the steps. And then truly, really, that is why there is this return to the crave to know yourself and be in love with yourself. And sometimes connecting with another human who has a soul and a spirit just affirms that connection of God-like source, creator, prime energy, goddess energy within you. And maybe, just maybe, it's two lonely people seeking and craving touch, 
touch to be remembered so that you remember that you are human, so that you remember that your body is a beautiful vessel, an expression and extension of love, of God's love, of universal love and knowing. And perhaps the kiss is just one part of touch for you. And the touch ignites sensory responses within your body. It makes you remember that you're alive and that you're not a lonely spirit, although you can feel very, very lonely, especially if you are on an intuitive journey, if you're really developing your intuition and your gifts and you're you're working with healing energy and chakras and all this stuff is unfolding for you. Whether you consciously asked for it or not, your body brings the sensory information to you just like your heart brings the emotional information to you. Not one of these things, our bodies, our souls, our hearts, or our minds are the overall identity of us. We take turns leading in these areas, just like roles you have. You might be a mother and so you lead in that role. Sometimes you're a partner, you lead in that role. Sometimes you're a business person, you lead in that role, but you move fluidly between these roles. So too do you move from your body and your your heart and your soul and your mind. You move fluidly between. You are all of these things encompassed. Not one journey, a spiritual journey or a human journey could be complete without the other. It is a state of pairing of amplification with another that creates a sacred third, which is this acknowledgement and understanding of you as a being filled up and made of, composed of love. To be able to tap and source and receive that love from you, your solar plexus, your intuition, beaming up into your heart And then letting your heart flow like the water, like the mind thoughts. Let the energy of the emotion in the heart flow like the water, like the mind thoughts. While the solar plexus, your spirit is lighting up your heart and giving an opportunity for the bubbling of energy, like the heat that comes from the low belly of the sacral chakra. And just warming your body for the flow, the natural flow. Don't hang on. You can't hold on to this momentary connection of love because it is always there. To hold on to it wouldn't make any sort of sense. It couldn't be. It must be flowing and fluid and cycling. Sometimes there's a lot and sometimes there's less. Or the feeling of a gentler flow. Rather, it's always prosperous and abundant in its cycle. It is moving through a rhythm in life just like you are. You may not be in an actual relationship right now with another human, but you are, I promise you, in the purest form of relation with yourself. And if you are ignoring that and redirecting and going outward to seek some kind of validation or fulfillment from some place of pain within you, you will be in a state of never feeling fulfilled. You will always feel like there's something missing. I promise you this. I know it. I know it as a fact. And that something missing is you and your connection through your body, to your soul, to your heart, to your thoughts, working together. And you can do that in so many human ways through being with nature, through connecting metaphysically with your higher self and the grid of your beloveds, because you have many beloveds in higher consciousness. There are so many ways to connect and flow and move with your body, different various forms of activity, of dance, of music, of rhythmic motion. There are so many invitations for connection and to know your soul and the energy of your body embodied. Just like journaling is for the mind, writing is for the mind, speaking is for the mind, your invitation here now is movement is for the body. Movement is for the body and the sensory understanding of what that is, of what that truly is. So this Sunday morning coffee episode begins and ends with a kiss. A kiss hello and a kiss to see you later. (laughs) See you again on the next episode of Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Hey, if you don't know me, it's nice to meet you. I share my work 
As an intuitive life coach, I'm quite unique in the sessions that I offer to individuals. If you're interested in that, you can certainly reach out to me or check out the information on Above Life channel on YouTube or check me out at Bridget Inspired on Facebook and Instagram. I hope I've inspired your spirit today with this audio conversation, with this episode, filled you with some hope and encouraged you most of all, encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for listening.